Okay, so welcome everyone. How many PIDs will screw you? How many of you guys ever used a Tech 2 or worked for GM? You had Engine 1, Engine 2, EVAP, EGR, you know what they were doing? They picked a group of PIDs for you, so you did not have all that much. That makes sense? Now, here's a car that came in, and this car had this problem twice. Now, if you're using something like a digital inspection, like Bolt-On or whatever company you may use, but Bolt-On since they're a sponsor, you could take screenshots. If not, how many of you guys use Dropbox? Dropbox is a free program up to so many computers. If you don't write that word down, Dropbox, Google it. You hit print screen, bingo, you get the screen. This is the Ford IDS, Ford factory scandal. And this comes in very, very handy if you're gonna diagnose a vehicle, okay? So, we have freeze frame. That means we had a code on this thing, which you can see, we have a bunch of them. We have a pending 301, that's cylinder number one, and we got a P219A, which is a hard code as well. If you highlight it, Ford tells you what that means. And they're getting better and better. This is guided diagnostics on European cars. So if you're like on Otis or ISTA, Wiring diagrams, they give you the whole freaking manual right here on your other side of your screen. That way you can walk you through. When you see bank one air fuel ratio imbalance, no, 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 no. You don't need an air fuel ratio sensor. Ford does use that, but this is not your problem. Okay? This is going to tell you you got a fuel delivery issue. Seen this numerous times. Now, one thing I like about these guys is this thing here called toolbox. Toolbox, we hit this, we can do relative compression immediately. We could do this misfire monitor. And notice how it graphs and the grays are where it went up and down. Notice all of them? Zero, 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 because every engine misfires, by the way. If it didn't, you wouldn't need a catalytic converter, because we cannot burn all the fuel that goes into a cylinder, correct? Catalytic converter helps clean it up. Look at cylinder number one, 146 misfires. So we got a problem going on right here, don't we? We're confirming that. Again, customers get these papers. Here's the fuel injector, relative injector flow test. This thing, if, if you don't own an IDS and you work with Ford, you want to buy this tool, let me tell you. And don't forget our AE sponsors, okay? AE tools. It colors it red for you. If it was here, it'd probably be yellow. Green is in what they call ticks, between the ticks. Now notice we got a little variation between it, but right here, we're on for 197 milliseconds versus 160. Now let's talk about this. If you had a regular injected car, non-GDI, what did you need to do to do a fuel balance test? Pressure gauge, unplug the injector with the key off, put your special tool, that was 500 milliseconds, press the button, C to 60 pounds of pressure, go down to maybe 50. The next one goes to 40. The next one goes to 40. The other one goes to five. What does that mean? The first one was clogged, the last one was P and fuel, it was open, right? That makes sense? Here, this does it with a pressure transducer. It's on the rail, it doesn't have a pressure regulator. Now, how many of you guys got pressure transducers? Should have them. We can go on the fuel rail, even with the old PV500 that I have, that's old, old, which they don't make for a long time, but you get a 350, you screw that on the rail, you put your scope on it, well, it ain't gonna make pretty boxes, but it's gonna make stuff like this every time a pulse comes through. You wanna know the fire in order? You take the channel that you trigger off and go to number one injector or number one coil and count it one, three, four, two. You could see the difference where it is. That saves you a hell of a lot of time of trying to play guess and work. These guys do it for you. Now, by the way, this tool is made by Teradyne. Teradyne makes Honda, makes Mazda, it makes the SDD for Jaguar. That's not a disease, by the way. SDD, okay? Jaguar, Land Rover, Range Rover, and it makes the Mercedes tool. 
they're all different. I can tell you SDD does use the fuel test. Mazda does not, Honda does not, and Mercedes does not. Okay, So this is a great tool and great software that Ford wanted to do certain things with, and they did a good job. By the way, you see this up here, the gas pump? This is your miles per gallon. That is your miles per gallon. If I click that, it'll tell me how many miles per gallon I'm getting. Here I'm doing a leak down test. You see the little tick? If it went under that, I'd have a failure. So it's going to give you all the calculations that you see here. You want to do that because you want to make sure the rest of the injectors don't have the leaks. You know, Pierre's getting a little old. So when he goes to the bathroom, he has to shake it a little more so there's not a lot of leaks. And his wife, well, your wife told me, man. I'm only kidding, Pierre. But you know, it, it drips, right? So we got to wake you up. This is adult education. Don't take it the wrong way. So basically, we want to make sure it's not dripping. And fuel pressure leak down monitor continues up to 23 hours and 59 minutes. So it'll tell you that you can run that thing overnight, one full day to see what your leak down is. The other thing we need to know about GDI, by the way, you got to be careful about parasitic draw. Now, what do I mean by that? Do you know when I'm walking to the car with my key fob, that fuel pump may start, the primary pump? Definitely when I hit the handle or unlock the door. That's everyone. But be aware that you may be looking for a parasitic draw. You may have it with that being on. Make sure the pump is off. And don't forget about NVLD, natural vacuum leak detection, is another one that could be running with the key out of the ignition. Those are two key points to remember. But here, this is a good way to check it. Now, when we're done, we rerun the test. Of course, if it came in looking crappy, right? We're going to give them back looking good. That's the big difference. You don't want to give them four fingers or three fingers. You want to give them all five back, right? So no misfire all the way across. We're all good with that. How about the fuel? Are we good? Here's our new injector, what it needed. Now, what would you recommend to this customer? If anything. Gonna give you a minute to think as I drink some water. Going forward after the one injector. Yeah, right now. Here's my here's my finish. What do I see there? Are they all even? So what may I have going on, let's say here? Restriction. Well there I may have some carbon buildup. Right? I may have some carbon buildup going on. And if that's the case, we want to tell this guy you may want to clean it, right? Now, I'm not going to get into a whole, I gave him a copy already. He has yeah, got it. Need to. Oh, Paul didn't have one. Sorry about that. So I would want to tell this guy, hey, you need a cleaning. Now, in this case, you have to take the whole manifold cradle off of the injectors. You got to, it will come off in this thing. You'll see a picture later. You could easily clean them all up. You're going to have to reseal all of them, aren't you? And you're going to have to make sure they're all clean going back in that head. And it may not be a bad idea. You go to Harbor Freight and you buy those door panel tools that are dirt cheap, or maybe it's your lucky day. You walk in, you get a free gift. And it happens to be the door panel tool, right? That happened to me one time. So you get the freebies. You take out all that carbon, use some cleaner, and you do them by hand. Now, it's a time-consuming job, but we've done quite a few like that. You take a cup, you fill it up so the customer sees the gook you took out. You take pictures, you back it all up, and this guy's going to get in his car and go, oh, my God, this thing runs great, because you cleared up all the restrictions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. do, do not use metal. Metal scratches anything, and when we talk about the injector seals in a little bit, I'm going to really stress that you're very careful cutting the seal off. If you're not careful and you scar it, think about how you get carbon on your barbecue. You ever notice carbon goes back to the same spot and you hit it with the brush and keeps coming back there? Carbon will build on where there is a mark in the metal and it'll keep going back there. 
and then you got more problems. So we don't want that. So I'd recommend a cleaning here. And by the way, we put more fuel out in less time, didn't we? That's the other key. 158 versus 161, 159. This is trying to play catch up to that, and it's not doing it. Yes? So this is decarbonizing the injectors, not the intake. This is decarbonizing through the injectors, because you could have dirt in there. Yeah. By the way, another thing with GDI injectors, some of them do not have filters or screens. They clog very, very easy. Okay, that's at the end, I'm going to want you to take pictures with your phone on some of the tips that Dennis gave us uh, from the fuel injection company. So you'd be cleaning these injectors while the car's running? Or you take yes. Them out? Or, well, you can do them both ways. You can ultrasonically clean these outside, okay, and clean the carbon out from the valves. Because remember, this could be a restriction from all the carbon that's down in that cylinder, too. Who knows? So you really got to install two types of cleaning. Well, something should definitely go in the tank. And without getting into a lot of companies, um, something that goes in the tank will help break it down using a top tier fuel. Toptierfuels.com is where you should go to make sure you're using a quality fuel. Uh, you know, Sunoco is only about a year ago when they got that designation. Prior to that, they weren't a top tier fuel. So mobile, Exxon, Shell, huh? Costco. Costco is a top tier. Yeah, top. They are top tier. You gotta remember they don't make it. So in supply in Costco, but they are top tier. They're listed. Yep. Okay. Some things to know. Ford uses a primary low pump. Hey, so does everyone else. A high pump. Yeah. A regulator. The regulator is pulse width modulated control by the computer. Stainless steel fuel rail. Fuel pressure sensor. Six spray hole injector. Six. That means we want this to atomize real good. This is not a one tip. We want a good spray pattern. The other thing I want you to write down here, not every injector sprays conical like this. Some may spray to the right or to the left on purpose. There's also locating tabs. You put them in. And if you think you're just going to go, ah, it doesn't matter, tab broke, who cares, put it this way, you may do engine damage. Because now the fuel may be going down a different way and giving you wash down in the cylinder wall. So you always want to make sure everything is lined up correctly. It sprays at a 16 micron level. That's pretty small. Okay, that's a pretty small spray. You got a PCM plus driver, a negative driver, four cam lobe. Here's a company with a four cam lobe. And fuel pressure rises 65 pounds to 2150 on demand. The fuel pump is primed when the doors are unlocked or open via the dome light circuit. So anytime that is opened or you get near the car to open it, some cars you just got to get near it, it'll unlock your door, the pump's going to come on. So you may even hear these things whining, okay? Just keep that in mind. Always depressurize the fuel system by removing the fuel pump relay or disconnecting the fuel pump and crank the engine over until the fuel pressure is down to a safe level. Remember, do that on your scan tool, as we said, correct? When installing a new high pressure pump, make sure it's in the correct position on the cam by slowly and slowly tighten the bolt. So we don't want to be on the high, right? We don't want to be on the knuckle. We want to be on a flat part and evenly torque them down and you should use Loctite on these things. The high pressure fuel pump has a cam roller plunger. So this one's a roller on this particular setup, okay? Not all of them. The FCV, fuel volume control valve, and the DVCS, demand control valve solenoid pids, are important to look at. And one thing about Ford, they got a gazillion acronyms. If you have their tool, all you gotta do is Highlight it like with your mouse on the bottom always tells you what it is because it can get confusing on a Ford You know, it wasn't supposed to be that way, but that's the way it is. They use 65 volts You need a special puller If you don't have a puller and you go, I'll use pliers. I'll use a pry bar. You know my big screwdriver You can't tell if you put a slight bend in this thing. You need a puller. How many guys worked on the old k -Jertronics? The ones with all the lines, right? Those were a bear to get out at times. 
Those rubber O-rings got hard. Oh, they got hard, man. If you didn't have the right puller with the slide hammer, you weren't getting it out. These are pretty hard, too. You should, if they're not going to come out easy without playing pry games, you need the slide hammer. Okay? That's important. And you need a seal remover and a seal installer. And by the way, you're not going to compress the seal, then walk away and go have lunch and then come back and stick it in. If you do that, when you go to stick it in, you just ruin the seal. There's a certain amount of time only that after compression, in a clean cylinder head bore, you need to get that thing in there. Remember, no lubricant at all. No grease, no silicone. It should fit right in. Okay. Important on GDI to diagnose the high pressure side using the scan tool. It's recommended not to use any type of gauge to diagnose it. It's not recommended that any power is supplied to the FVR, that's the, the regulator, since this action may cause damage. Fuel rail pressure, desired PID and actual PID, you definitely want to look at that when the pedal is to the metal, wide open throttle. The duty cycle of the FVR should increase along with fuel pressure to about 2,000 PSI. So it's something for you to look at. Do we have sense, compare, and adjust? If I step on